what are your current impacts and dependencies on biodiversity and setting targets based off of that. It should be clear by now that businesses have a significant role to play in regenerating nature and addressing biodiversity loss. Let's hear again from Cindy on how businesses can use the circular economy as an approach to tackle biodiversity loss. So I think we're hearing more and more commitments from different businesses, you know, um, in light of our growing knowledge on the root causes of biodiversity loss. And I think my question now is, how do we change from ambition to action? How, how can businesses um, act towards achieving their circular economy goals and also um, reducing biodiversity loss in their, in their operations? Yeah, absolutely. Businesses have a very central role to play in all of this. Um, and, you know, while the exact things that you do will depend a little bit on which industry you're in, what part of the value chain you occupy, there are kind of three steps that we think any business can really do now to start moving into that action space from, from that ambition. Um, and the first of those is really just assessing what are your current impacts and dependencies on biodiversity and setting targets based off of that. And a crucial part of this will really be taking a whole supply chain view. So you need to think about where are your impacts on nature, not only in your direct operations, but also upstream and downstream. And, you know, we have examples like Caring um, in the fashion world, for instance, they've developed an environmental profit and loss tool um, in which they can look at their whole supply chain and assess what their impact is on things like water use, land use, um, greenhouse gas emissions. And based off of that, they identify what are the areas that they need to intervene to have the greatest impact um, on biodiversity. And, you know, once you've set those clear targets, then the next step really is seeing what are the circular economy intervention points and levers that you can use to, to achieve those ambitions. Um, so Schneider Electric is another company who did a similar exercise. They found out that one of their biggest impacts on nature is in their natural resource extraction for their products. And so what they ended up doing was they came up with a retrofit solution for some of their electrical equipment um, called EcoFit. And with that, they're able to replace certain components of their product to upgrade it rather than having to take the entire product back and, and send a new one to the client. Um, so that's been able to reduce significantly their pressure on natural resource extraction, but also cut costs for their clients because they don't need to replace the entire system. Um, and once all of those things have been done, you know, we can also take this broader systemic view. So how can you collaborate with others to drive that system level change? Um, and that's, yeah, across your supply chain, um, but also with different stakeholder groups and um, with different industries even. So, you know, uh, a fashion industry company might think about how can I do regenerative agriculture for my cotton, but at the same time, Many in the food industry are thinking about that same thing. And so how can we kind of build these mutually beneficial relationships where actually we're learning from each other and really contributing to reaching the same goal together? That would be important. I see. I really like um, how you've said mutually beneficial relationships. And I'm thinking, I know we're talking about businesses and what they can do right now, but I'm also now thinking about the policy environment and because policy is really important in businesses being able to do these things, I'm thinking, so what can, what can policymakers, what can we get from policymakers to make this able to happen? Yeah. So I think for policymakers, it's also different levels where they, you know, we'd really need their engagement. Um, on an international level, we want to see the circular economy being recognized more as, uh, as a tool, really, to be able to achieve um, a lot of the biodiversity ambitions and address the, the really fundamental causes of biodiversity loss. So we talk about the post-2020 uh, global biodiversity framework, which is being um, developed right now. You know, that's supposed to set internationally a, a goal of how are we all collectively going to be uh, working towards turning the tide on biodiversity loss. And in the first draft of that document, we already see mentions of, you know, the need to change production systems, the need to change consumption. 
but it's missing still the how. And so really getting that circular economy language into that type of documentation would be really important in, in driving its adoption.